Astral projection is the practice of willfully disconnecting your mind or soul from your body and traveling around in a parallel spiritual realm called the astral realm. This is the name given to a dimension right above us on a higher plane, though it looks the exact same as our natural world because it's the same universe just on a higher level. The metaphysical component of you that animates your physical body is believed to be an energetic imprint of your physical body, almost like a phantom or a ghost. And when this part of you leaves your physical body while your body is still alive, this is called astral projection. When outside of one's body, a person exists theoretically as a disembodied soul. So astral projection is the experience of being self-aware as this detached astral body or subtle body where you are fully cognizant in a normal state of consciousness, even though your physical body may be miles away from you asleep on the natural plane. These experiences are also called out-of-body experiences, or OBEs, because they involve the separation of consciousness and body. Eastern, Buddhist, and Hindu cultures have their own way of describing astral projection, but just like in the New Age movement, astral projection is thought as being evidence of spiritual advancement. For example, Aleister Crowley started an organization called AA, where mastering the astral plane while outside of your body was one of the requirements for graduating from the first order into the second. In Hinduism, astral projection is one of the siddhis, or paranormal abilities, called manojava, a spiritual attainment gained through right practice of yoga and meditation. It's believed to be a very ordinary ability that the spiritually developed are able to perform. Videos on YouTube with millions of views are teaching people how to astral project, offering various techniques and guided meditations designed to catalyze out-of-body experiences. It is by far one of the most popular practices in the New Age movement. The first question is, is this even possible? While the Bible by no means condones the practice of astral projection, it may have something to say about it being at least possible in theory. In 2 Corinthians 12, the Apostle Paul describes a vision he had where he was caught up to the third heaven. The word used in Greek here is harpazo, which is the same word he uses in 1 Thessalonians 4.17, where he describes those who will be caught up in the rapture. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Paul describes two different times that whether I had this vision, in the body or out of the body, I do not know. Paul believed he could have been outside of his body when he had this experience of heaven, meaning we have a possible reference to a separation of soul and body prior to physical death. Biblically speaking, there may be a theoretical framework for OBEs, as the Apostle Paul thought this was a possible explanation for his vision. But there is a difference between God giving you an experience when you are in right relationship with him and you trying to bring about this experience as someone who is not a born-again Christian. One is an involuntary experience given by God, so rare that it may have never even happened before in human history at the hand of God. And the other is a voluntary practice apart from God that the Bible condemns as sorcery or witchcraft. Galatians 5 condemns all occult practice as sorcery and says those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And Revelation 21.8 says, But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. In place of sorcerers, the NIV actually translates the Greek word pharmakia to those who practice magic arts. Magic is the art of producing a desired effect or result through the use of incantation or various other techniques that presumably assure human control of supernatural agencies or the forces of nature. And witchcraft is the art or power of bringing magical or preternatural power to bear or the act or practice of attempting to do so. Astral projection falls under major categories of spiritual sin and also commits the sin of idolatry by exalting ourselves above the place of God and deciding we want sovereignty over when our soul leaves our body. This practice is evidence that we do not belong to God's kingdom, but to the spirit that is at work in the sons of disobedience, the prince of the power of the air, as Satan is called in Ephesians 2 verse 2. Satan's domain of existence is in the air, which refers to a higher invisible realm. The term seems to denote that evil spirits, who have some power of influencing us by their temptations, have their abode in the atmosphere, or at least haunt it, being invisible like it, yet exercising a real influence on human souls and drawing them in worldly directions and contrary to the will of God. Both in ancient and modern revelation, the ministers of evil are exhibited as in the upper spiritual world, a true wonder in heaven. But the term is used here symbolically for the spiritual sphere only. Demons, too, exist in the air, or what Ephesians calls the heavenly places. As the Bible says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. In the heavenly places, or heavenly, taking heaven for the whole expansum or spreading out of the air, between the earth and the stars, the air being the place from whence the devils assault us. The phrase, in the heavenly realms, refers primarily to the sphere of the evil powers. 
So if Satan and his demons operate on a higher spiritual plane in between the natural realm and heaven, could the astral realm be this spiritual plane? Is it possible that astral projection might bring our spirit man to the realm that demons operate from? Maybe the astral realm is one of these heavenly places, an invisible air realm where Satan and his demons exist. At the very least, it brings us to a plane that they are able to enter into at will from their plane. After all, anyone in the New Age who has a lot of experience with astral projection is well aware that the astral plane can be occupied with all kinds of nasty entities. The New Age movement will usually refer to these entities as trickster entities or negative astral entities, but they retain the same characteristics and behaviors of demons in the Bible and are often identified as demons specifically. When you separate your psychosoma, also called the astral body, with your physical body, you might draw the attention of spirits or entities who reside in the astral realm. Depending on who you speak to, these demons look different. That's because they can shapeshift. Unfortunately, these demonic entities can appear to you in a form that you already trust, like your partner or a family member. Sometimes the demon won't want to fight you, they'll instead try and tempt you sexually. One New Age teacher admits that sometimes an entity that normally resides on the astral plane can come to you and stimulate you sexually for the purpose of swiping your energy. These entities can come to you against your will and essentially rape you. If you've ever been stuck in a sleep paralysis state and felt someone touching you in your special areas and got aroused even though you were terrified, you're basically being astral raped. The Ascension Glossary states, sadly, it is all too common for human men, women, and children to be subjected to astral rape during sleep state. Another New Age website tells us that the astral world is full of spiritual creations, but there you can meet also unkind beings and even demons. So many astral travelers use different protections for their physical bodies, because when your spirit is traveling, they sustain, your body remains vulnerable. It basically basically is an empty vessel for demons and other beings. So the astral plane is already known for being a breeding ground for spiritual attack, which is what we would expect if the heavenly places are occupied by spiritual forces of wickedness like the Bible says. Because of the potential danger in the astral, we are told to visualize white light around ourselves or use positive affirmations to protect ourselves. We are also told that we only attract negative things into our experience if we are fearful, since there's this idea that we create our experiences with our dominant thoughts and emotions. None of this is true. In this video, we are going to expose this occult practice and allow the evidence to make it clear to us that astral projection is both dangerous and demonic. I want to share one of my two primary astral projection experiences I had, where I was pulled out of my body twice by an entity I can only describe as demonic. After this, we are going to look at eight different accounts of astral attack and see what they reveal to us about the nature of this practice, this realm, and the beings that inhabit it. When I was in the New Age movement, something I was deeply entrenched in was a practice called lucid dreaming, which is the act of being conscious and aware within a dream. You are essentially awake within your dream and have full control over your own body and mind. One experience I had lucid dreaming seemed so vivid and so ultra real that it surpassed the dozens I had before it. Nothing spectacular was happening, I was just driving my car in a local plaza by my house, but it seemed far more real than the average lucid dream. I reached a point where I thought to myself, I literally cannot distinguish between this being a lucid dream or real life anymore. And if I can't tell the difference between this and real life, how do I know real life isn't just one big dream? After what seemed like a minute later, the car I was driving in the lucid dream started glitching out as my dream became interrupted by an outside force. I got pulled out of the rooftop of my car and was still in my lucid dream, but I was now 30 feet above the rooftops overlooking my neighborhood. After a few seconds, a being appeared in front of me with red skin a red cloak and black markings on his face. He was standing about 20 feet away from me. He looked lizard-like, and although he was virtually humanoid, his jaw structure was different from that of an ordinary human. He stared at me with an eerie, creepy smile on his face for a few seconds before a third eye opened on his forehead. I began to feel my consciousness get sucked into his third eye, almost like it was a vacuum or a vortex, becoming more and more disoriented the closer I got. After I was fully pulled in, things went black and silent for about three seconds. When I tried to open my eyes, I found that I was no longer in my lucid dream. I was laying down in the air four feet over my bed. I sat up and looked around outside of my body, noticing that my room was being lit up by the light coming off of my astral body. My consciousness felt exactly like it does now except more sharp and more vivid because it was not being filtered through a physical brain. Nonetheless, I was scared to find myself pulled out of my body, hovering in the air. I tried to fight to get back into my body for the next few minutes by thrusting myself back down into my body and trying to wake myself up. I noticed that my astral leg was going in and out of my physical leg, which was laying on the bed, and my mind began to flicker almost like a broken light bulb as I began to get closer to settling back into my physical body. I began to pinch the leg of my astral body in hopes that I would wake up, but was unable to feel anything. When I finally entered my body, I found myself in a state of sleep paralysis where I was unable to move. 
A loud buzzing sound was taking place in the middle of my forehead, which I had learned from research was a precursor to out-of-body experiences. Knowing I was about to be pulled out of my body a second time, even though I had just fought to get back in, I opened my eyes and was once again a foot over top of my body. After another minute or so of struggling, I settled back into my flesh and was blown away at what I had just experienced. Here are a few takeaways from what happened to me. The red-skinned being pulled me out of my body without my consent. I got pulled out a second time against my will after I had fought to get back inside my body. I was doing all the protection techniques taught in the New Age movement for how to guard against unwanted attacks. I even had a Bible that I would sometimes put under my bed and even under my pillow, as I naively thought this would help ward off any dark spirits. Nonetheless, I still encountered one who was able to override my lucid dream and pull me out of my body twice. People think that demons in the astral realm will somehow respect us because we imagine a ball of white light around us or repeat a mantra of protection. Or they will think that we can only have scary experiences if we are operating at a low vibration because fear apparently attracts more fear into our reality. Here is a story, however, of a woman who had nothing but the best possible attitude prior to her experience. Yet she was pinned down and violated by three demonic-like beings in the astral plane. She starts by describing her experience with her spirit guide, named Aaron, who used to make love with her in the astral. One day, the veil was lifted and this spirit guide of hers revealed its true nature. So I called out for Aaron and I thought it was him. Before, whenever I would see Aaron, there was a huge light. This time, it was all dark, which should have been an indication, but I ignored it at the time. So it was pleasurable at first. It felt like it started in my base chakra and whatever was touching me was working its way up. I'm not sure when it happened, but all of a sudden it felt like there was an energy change in the room. Aaron, or whatever had been with me originally, was gone, and now I could sense at least three or more entities. They were standing by me, looking down and discussing what to do with me. One of them said, let's take her back with us. I got a flash of what one looked like, and it was not pleasant at all. He had long stick legs, like as skinny as a broom, and a head of a ram or something with horns, kind of like that pan creature. The female entity he was talking to had a lot of hate she was directing at me. I was kind of feeling uncomfortable at this point and wanted to leave my body completely to have more control over the situation. It wasn't sleep paralysis, it was like my astral body was being held down. I could move my arms and legs, but I was being pinned down right in the solar plexus area. Then all of a sudden, they started running at me from across the room and darting down on top of me. It's like they were taking turns taking energy. I couldn't really do anything about it physically or astrally, I was just kind of stuck. Their talking was getting louder, and now I could hear music. It felt very obscene. So the spirit guide showed up with a host of demons, and they pinned down her astral body and all took turns violating her against her will. This debunks the objection that if you're operating at a low vibration of fear, you will manifest or attract scary entities in the astral realm, because this woman called out to her loving spirit guide in confidence and in love. She goes on to say, just thinking about him at any point now, I will get intense butterflies in my stomach and feel like I am in love. So she did not manifest this experience out of fear. She truly believed she had a romantic partnership with her spirit guide, and he turned her over to a host of demons, even though she hadn't been in a prior state of fear. What we learn from this testimony is that fear is not a necessary prerequisite for a bad astral experience. You can have terrifying, evil experiences even if you are in the spirit of love. You don't create your experience with your dominant thought and emotions. Another thing about astral entities is they have a reputation of shape-shifting. Because of the graphic nature of this testimony, I will not be quoting it word for word. Even summarizing it is stomach-turning, but it's necessary to communicate the severity of what goes on in the astral realm. He describes being sexually tormented by demons for an hour. This was a frequent occurrence for this person, only this time the demons made him read Bible verses as they were violating him. He believes they were making him do this as a way to mock God. The demons then disguised themselves as a woman and commanded him to violate her. She then shapeshifted into a little girl, and he, being convinced that he was awake at this time, was waiting for the authorities to come take him to prison for child abuse. The first question is, why would these negative astral entities have him read from the Bible as a way to mock God? Why not have him read from the Quran, the Zohar, or the Vedas as a way to mock God? These negative astral entities seem to take issue with the Father of Jesus Christ and not the deities of other religions, which gives credence to the idea that these entities are demonic. This also begs the question, how do we know that the original form they appear to us in isn't already a shape-shifted form? How do we know that their first appearance to us isn't already a disguise? According to the Bible, Satan is able to transform himself into an angel of light. His ministry is one of smoke and mirrors. Just because a being manifests himself to us as a guide, a master, a ghost, or an angel doesn't mean this is their actual form. So a second thing we learn about astral projection from this experience is that demons will disguise themselves to hide their actual form. We can't trust the beings we encounter. A forum user describes his experience of being molested by an entity who was pretending to be his girlfriend. 
Well, this morning I took a nap, and this being posing as my girlfriend tried to get freaky with me. I noticed I was dreaming, and remembered that my girlfriend had school now. It felt different, and that it had attached itself to my root chakra and I was being leeched. I started spewing demon spawn priest talk. I cast the out foul demonic spore of hell. Go back to hell, you spawn of Satan, in my commanding voice and pulled away. It took all of my energy to do that. Then I collapsed on the bed and was paralyzed. I laid there for a while and it all faded away. I woke up again in the astral and this stupid entity was at the doorway, still posing as my girlfriend. I could barely see. My astral vision was blurring, but I could see out of the corner of my eye. Astral sex is a very common practice that is encouraged within the New Age movement, and only God knows how many people are interacting with demons in disguise thinking they are their astral playmates. We learn from this testimony that these demons will manipulate you into having sex with them by changing their form. Another thing they will do, as we have already seen, is paralyze you against your will. A person online reached out for help after having the following experience. I saw myself out of my body, looking around my room, and then something I could feel but not see had come to me. It was a male, and he held me down. I tried to get away, but he was very strong and overpowered me. He put his hands on my throat, and I had no voice. He kept me down and took full advantage of me. He was violating me to the fullest extent and left when he was finished. I woke up crying and continued to do so for a while. Another story describes something similar. I drifted into the astral, or was pulled in rather. I floated up to some shifting faces girl. She, or should I say it, opened its mouth really wide and pulled on the side of it. Its skin stretched like elastic and pulled out at about an arm's length. Then it reached at me and tried to do the same on my skin, which wasn't as stretchy. Next thing, something was inserted in my anus. I've had this happen hundreds of times over the last two years. Then I'm in a new position and arms are paralyzed, so now I can't move. And I start trying really hard to move my arms. I can a little. As I struggle, I hear a woman laughing, as if she were wrestling with me trying to hold me still. This is the side of astral projection you don't hear about in books or videos. There's lots of instructional material telling people how to leave their bodies, and next to nothing about what actually goes on when people leave their bodies. We learn from these testimonies that you aren't in control. You can be paralyzed and tormented against your will even if you don't want to. Your desires don't affect their behavior. Another common experience is that of astral parasites, where such entities attach themselves to your astral body and feed off of your energy even if you have returned from your OBE. In an article written by a certified hypnotist and metaphysicist of 20 years, he attests to the reality of possession after astral travel. I have had a number of personal experiences with these troublesome creatures. I initially attempted to remove them by taking Epsom salt baths and posting glasses of sea salt around my house. That didn't work. Next, I attempted to send them on their way by burning sage and using a banishing script. I employed this method several times without success. These spirits are incredibly stubborn. I began yelling at them. I told them that I am in charge and that they must vacate the property immediately. One night, I was meditating in a dark room when I suddenly felt a sensation that I would describe as a bug crawling under my left eye. I looked in a mirror and saw that I had a scratch. This was the evil being's way of expressing their displeasure with my behavior. At this point, I realized that parasites had no intention of leaving. His solution? Just ignore them. Fear encourages them. Focus on your life. He hasn't gotten rid of them. We will talk about the real solution to astral horrors later in the video. Here is another account of astral parasites. I've had one experience that convinced me that out-of-body experiences are real, and I had a trippy interesting experience last night which has got me fascinated with the idea of astral projection. Anyhow, if this stuff is real, then I have the impression that I have parasites latched onto me. I've been getting sleep paralysis for years, and I always feel things clinging onto me from behind, and I feel the sensation of needles or something being injected into my spine. It's not very painful, but it feels like whatever is going on there on my back is not good. I've tried reaching behind me and grabbing things while I'm in sleep paralysis. It always feels like I'm grabbing some kind of small, three foot tall bony creatures. So we additionally see that demons will attach themselves to you and can enter into you on some level while you are astral traveling. While you are outside of your body, you have fully yielded to a demonic realm and given them legal right into your world by engaging in a sorcery. When you get back into your body, all of a sudden you feel something being attached to you. Demonic oppression is not what people think. It doesn't necessarily make you go insane, speak in demonic voices, or eat spiders. The demon gets woven into some level of your flesh or mind, and its eyes become your eyes. And from this place, it influences your thoughts, your predispositions, and your behaviors. Here's an example of someone experiencing demonic inhabitation after astral projecting. I left my body during astral travel. When I came back, I was not alone. Never been right since then. A guru told me an astral parasite entered my aura. I've tried banishing and purifications, but I think it is still with me. Notice how he didn't say anything about having a terrible astral projection where he saw a bunch of demons. He simply astral projected in the same realm everyone else does, came back, and was not alone in his body anymore. 
If a practice can open you up to demonic possession, it's demonic. That is what demonic means. Despite the clear evidence of demonic behavior, New Age teachers such as Koi Fresco will often insist that an experience in the astral is neither good nor bad. It just comes down to how we perceive it. Astral projections are not demonic entities or demonic things in their own right. While many religions might try to twist these external experiences beyond the body as such, they are just experiences, and our perception is what shapes them. You can view an astral projection as demonic, or you can view it as angelic. The choice is yours, but on a universal level, it's neither. So beyond My question is, how can we view getting sexually violated against our will by a ram-headed entity as angelic? How is contracting an astral parasite angelic? The New Age movement is absolutely pervaded with signs of demonic activity that most ancient cultures would recognize as such. But because the biggest fear of New Agers is fear itself, they will turn a willful blind eye to the evidence of demonic activity to prevent themselves from seeing the implications of their practices. Pride often prevents a person from seeing that they are involved in something spiritually harmful. It may be embarrassing or discouraging to think that the last year of study and practice for you has been opening up the door to demonic oppression. But even some types of modern Satanism acknowledge the demonic nature of astral projection. On the Joy of Satan Ministries website and other satanic websites, you can learn how to astral project and create your own temple in the astral realm to perform satanic rituals and meet with demons. The Bible calls these experiences demonic. Satanism calls these experiences demonic. Most ancient cultures would call these experiences demonic, and a lot of the New Age movement would agree that these encounters are demonic. They will say, however, that these experiences happen because they were on a lower astral plane, and they were on a lower astral plane because of their low vibrational state. It is said that most experiences can be pleasant, and that all bad experiences are a result of that person being on a lower spiritual plane, and they got to the lower plane by being in a state of fear. This is false because the girl who was raped by her spirit guide was expecting nothing but pure love, like she had previously experienced, and did not say anything about being in a different plane when the demons raped her. None of the testimonies of people who were tormented said anything about being on a different astral plane than before. The idea that demonic activity only happens on some lower astral plane is a textbook ad hoc fallacy. An ad hoc explanation is an explanation that is adopted purely for the purpose of trying to save a theory, without there being any independent reason or rational motivation for it being adopted. If someone gets raped by a demon in the astral, we can save the illusion that the astral plane is a beautiful realm of peace by postulating an infinite number of astral realms and lump all the demonic activity into the lower ones. But this is an unviable explanation when we look at testimonies. Not a single story of astral attacks, astral parasites, or astral rape mentions the person being in a different astral plane. This means that demons inhabit the astral realm regardless of whether or not they have revealed themselves to you yet. If the astral realm is inhabited with demons for some people, that means that it's inhabited with demons in general. They either dwell on the astral plane or they don't. If they dwell there, which evidence shows that they do, then they dwell there even if you have not encountered them yet. Further evidence that this practice is demonic comes from the only thing proven to stop astral attacks from happening. A former ufologist discovered that UFO research organizations were covering up testimonies of abductions and spiritual attacks being stopped when they used the name of Jesus. And he created a whole website exposing the hidden agenda of these beings. His website contains a hundred testimonies of people who have been able to stop night terrors, astral attacks, alien abductions, and sleep paralysis immediately through nothing more than calling out for Jesus. If these beings were just trickster entities, thought forms, or astral aliens, why would they be subject to people saying his name? Here's one testimony of a woman named Lisa. The first time this happened was last year, in April. Whatever it was picked me up by my hair, and when I yelled Jesus Christ, I was released. On the next occasion was right after that, and I was literally being lifted up out of my bed spiritually. I could see my daughter from above, and I said the name again, and it dropped me. The next incident, and this is going to sound very crazy, a wolf was pacing around my bed. He reminded me of the wolf in sheep's clothing. It was very real, just as the other experiences. I experienced in February of this year, a long alien-like finger that was stroking my face and tried to drag me out of my bedroom door. Once again, I said the name and it let me go. When I say drag, it was a spiritually leaving of my body. So she was being pulled out of her body spiritually by something that tried dragging her out of her bedroom and this experience was interrupted by using the name of Jesus. If these astral beings aren't demons, why do they yield to the name of Jesus? The Bible says, Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. If Jesus is God over all, as it says in Romans, it makes perfect sense why the name of Jesus would stop these astral attacks. But if Jesus is nobody special and these were just general astral creatures, why is Jesus a problem for them? Remember, it was the god of the Bible the astral demons were trying to mock in the previous testimony we read, not the gods of Hinduism. 
A man named Jason gives a similar testimony. I was asleep in my basement bedroom when I woke up suddenly and noticed three beings standing at the foot of the bed. I was completely paralyzed and overcome with terror, and immediately sensed these beings were evil. They had reptilian skin and large black eyes. They floated around to the side of the bed. I sensed that the one in the middle was their leader. The leader reached down and grabbed my arms with his hands on my biceps and lifted me out of bed. I felt almost completely weightless like a helium balloon. When I was in a standing position, but not touching the floor, his mouth opened wide and he breathed the furnace hot blast of sulfur smelling air in my face. Then we began to rotate and sink head first in the floor. I thought they were taking me to hell, and I said I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, and instantly I was back in bed. My heart was pounding out of my chest and I was soaked with sweat. From these testimonies we additionally learned that astral attacks are interrupted by calling out to Jesus which confirms to us their identity as demons and his identity as Lord. Demons want you to astral project so that they can make you think you are your own god, and can instill false doctrines of ascension into you, convincing you that you can spiritually evolve through secret knowledge and performing occult practices. It's also leveraged to instill false theories of the afterlife into you, causing you to think you can just float around in the astral until you decide to reincarnate again. New Agers believe that you experience a good or bad astral realm temporarily, depending on whether you were a good or bad person in this life, and that the bad astral experience after death only lasts until you forgive yourself. Not only does this contradict everything Jesus says about the afterlife, it contradicts every other culture in history. If your astral projection experiences make you think you are a god, that the astral realm is a benevolent floaty realm, or that you won't have to be morally accountable in the afterlife, then you are being systematically groomed by the same demons that torment people on the astral plane. And this is actually testable, as we have seen from the testimonies where astral entities run for the hills at the name of Christ. For the people of these testimonies, the veil of delusion has been lifted from their eyes, and they see the astral realm and the beings that inhabit it for what they truly are, demons who are subject to the lordship of Jesus Christ. We have learned that the Bible condemns the practice of astral projection as sorcery, as sin worthy of God's judgment. We have learned that the Bible identifies higher spiritual realms as being the air and the heavenly places in which Satan and his demons operate. We have also learned the following six facts about astral projection. It's a dangerous occult practice that does nothing except make you susceptible to demonic influence and deceive you about the nature of the soul, the spirit world, and the afterlife. God prohibits such practices in scripture because he knows what we are getting involved with. He knows what's on the other side of the veil if we try to leave our body, and he knows we will be deceived if we go down that rabbit hole. I would encourage all those who are watching this to make a decision to avoid this practice. As someone who is speaking from experience, it does nothing except strengthen you in your own self-deception. Make a decision today to press into relationship with Jesus Christ as your source of nurture and fulfillment. Jesus does not promise OBEs to those who repent and follow him, but he does promise spiritual intimacy and eternal life beyond the grave. The part of us that craves the supernatural can be satisfied by relationship with the supernatural God who made you. And all the questions we have about who we are and why we are here are answered in his word. When we begin to explore spirituality outside the boundaries of his lordship, we play ourselves into the hands of a demonic kingdom that is determined to lead us into deception and destruction. And luckily the Lord pulled me back from the other side of the fence so that I can attest with a clear conscience that astral projection is a demon-assisted practice intended to strengthen you in your false beliefs. The best thing you could do for your spiritual development is forsake this practice, ask Jesus Christ to forgive you for your involvement with it, and put your trust in him alone for your salvation. Because all of the longing you have for things beyond this world can only be satisfied by an intimate relationship with God and the eternal life he promises to those who repent and believe on his son. Hey guys, Steve here. Thank you so much for watching the video all the way to the end. I know it was kind of a long one. Some of you have been asking me how come I haven't been making as much content as I normally do. The reason for that is because I'm actually writing a book. That's all I can say about it right now, though I will say it is on the New Age movement and it will be released this year, so stay tuned for that. If you'd like to support more content like this, you can do so by supporting me on Patreon. I really do appreciate it. There's a link in the description for more on that. Thanks again for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one.